It's beer o'clock on Real Ale Craft Beer. I have arrived into Bridgend, South Wales this morning and we're gonna do a beer, bars, breweries and pubs and bottle shops of Bridgend. So we've just arrived. It's a quite a nice sunny morning. I've not I've not been to Bridgend in years. Um, no excuses really. I should make more of an effort to do. It's quite a large town in Wales and I believe they've got a couple of decent pubs decent bottle shop and a brewery which we're going to go and see today so um, let's get off this train platform and go and have a look so it looks like we're just getting onto Bridgen High Street uh, a couple of nice old uh, Victorian Edwardian buildings in pretty good well maybe not the high street maybe the high streets up there I thought I've never really been to Bridgen I'd make more of an effort, but here we are, uh, our nearest beer shop. Craft beer, cider, and spirits. <laughs> Look at this. Some Barry Island gin there. <laughs> so there's all your gins and whatnot. Uh, and then we have, oh, look at this, we have some Lager beer hell, Paul and a Paul and a vice beer, Trappist Russia Force 10. Some Vault City and some ciders and here is he's the owner who's invited me here today. Hello Lee. You found it then? I found it, I found the nearest bottle shop. <laughs> And who's this man? Is your son? Is it? This is my son, Daniel. Hello, Daniel. How you doing, mate? You all right? Thank you. There you go. Yeah, brilliant. So you've been here four months. Yes, indeed. Brilliant. I was just saying, um, like, I, I haven't been to Bridgen for years, and it's literally well, forty minutes for me on a train. I was saying I, I must make more of an effort. Well, I, I'm here today with Maiden. and I've looked. Look at these beers. Got some fantastic stuff. Duration. Beer riff, elusive, wow, Dea, amazing, Rivington, yeah, 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 the dogs, of course, yeah, 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 dogs win, your brewery, dogs win, so this is your bottle shop, yep. you started a brewery, Lee, when did you start the brewery? Uh, that would have been April 2018. April 2018. And you had your first pint of Gamma Ray in a pub in Swansea in 2015. That's what kind of got it all going yeah, for you, was, was it? Uh, the Copper Bar by the, uh, by the castle. Oh, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, what, was you working down there at the time? Or you, you come across it? Um, I think we went down for him for some reason. You and me, maybe. Right, right, right. I remember now. Might have been shopping. Yeah, might have been, and you found a part, and you, and you never look back, and all these years later, nearly, nearly, well, eight years later, you, you've, you've got a bottle shop, yep. a brewery, yeah, so tell me about your journey then, the brewery, how, is that a growing thing, it, it, where did you start with the brewery? Um, well, we'll take a trip up there later, which yeah. is cool. um, but it all started from uh, my mate making one of the kits from Wilkinson's. Okay. And um, I'd always messed about with those kits before, never had any decent results. So yeah. uh, I tried one of his and it was like, hang on, this actually tastes like beer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Decent stuff. Yeah. So um, yeah, I went from that and it just went flat out from there. Uh, started messing about with kits, adding specialty grains, adding my own hops, making yeah. my own recipes from the kits. And then went on to all grain. Okay. Did the old um, temperature control and everything else to do everything properly at the, uh, the home level. Yeah. And then one of my mates said, I'll, uh, if you go commercial with this, I'll stock you in my shop. So it's like we got a route to market before I even started going commercial. Amazing, amazing. Um, yeah, and sort of, it was, it was absolutely nuts because I went from my first kit to commercial brewing in just over 12 months. Amazing, that's fantastic, fantastic. And the brewery, where did that start? Um, well, it started off on a little homebrew kit, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
I wanted to make more beer. I, I mean, are you in a... Sorry, my, my, let me rephrase that question. Are you in a unit now, then, or...? Oh, no, no, no. Still in my garage. Oh, can't fault it. They can't fault it. Well, we'll go and have a look later on. We're going to have a look later on. But your, your beers, um, some of your kind of Belgian beers last year were fantastic. Um, I reviewed one of them the other day. Uh, where, which one did we do? I think we did the 10 minutes and 10 days. That was really good. That was really good. So you've then gone from brewery in the garage to bottle shop. So how did you come across this? And what was the idea behind this bottle shop then? Well, it was it was actually a craft beer shop before we took it on. Okay. Um, but the guy wasn't really making as much money as he wanted to out of it. Yeah. And he had another venture as well. He's got a bar down the road. Okay. Um, my lad had been working here for 12 months. Right. And the guy said, oh, look, I've had enough. I'm going to close it down. Right. So, so it would have put him out of work. It would have put another empty shop in Bridgend, which is not what it needs. Yeah. And I would have lost one of my, well, one of my best sales points, really, because it sold really well for me. Okay. So putting all those things together, it was like, you know, let's give it a go. Give it a go. So so what have you done? Have you made major changes here? Or? Oh, yeah, there's, there's pretty much nothing that is here now that was here before. In fact, the only thing that's here is that IKEA unit. That's the only thing that's just left. So all the fridges... You yeah. went along with putting fridges in. That's a great thing, that is. Keep the beer fresh. Keep it nice and cold. Um, I bet there's a lot of custom coming off that now. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And one of the main things as well that pushed me to buy the place was every time I come in here, I think, right, if I had this place, I'd do this, I'd do that. Mm -mm. Um, mm. Because before there was no fridges, it was all on shelves. Yeah. Um, I thought the first thing I'd do is bring fridges in are bringing some of the biggest names that we've got in the UK, like Aslex, um, Rivington, Stannery, all the uh, all the really good breweries, which were never here before. And how is the? Is it an education process for Bridgend? Is it is it you're having to teach people about Rivington and Stannington and all these other breweries or St Stannery? Sorry. Is yeah, it, it is definitely um, before. The shelves are pretty much full with Time Rebel, uh, Crafty Devil, and things like that. Yeah. So it is a lot of stuff. I mean, Mackie Mackie, um, when we first had that in, it was like nobody was touching it. Because Where's that in? Just through there. Oh, right, yeah, okay. I mean, the craft beer scene is changing so much, not, not even I can keep up with what's going on, like, you know, it's, uh, yeah. it um, is pretty... When we first had those in, people were like, oh, it's 500 mil can. It isn't cheap. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's like trying to talk people around it and saying, you know, this is probably one of the best beers you'll ever try. Yeah, um, okay. It's well worth the, the, the seven quid a can. Yeah. There you go. And it's just been absolutely flying out since is it? been buying it. Yeah. Fantastic. Oh, that's great. That's really fantastic. So we're heading towards Christmas now. So you've got your Christmas boxes up there. Yep. I imagine it's going to be a really busy time of year for you. Oh, yeah, totally. I mean, we've got ready with the, uh, we've got, um, the Christmas boxes up there, the three packs and six packs we do. Um, as you can see, I've got some, uh, what's the word? Uh, I've got, got the logo branding on all the boxes because I do my own label printing. For the, yeah. For my cans. Right. Yeah. Perfect. So we just bought a uh, a different label stock and fitted on them. So we've got the nearest beer shop logo on those as well. So yeah, people are starting to buy the Christmas packs already. Fantastic. Fantastic. Look at that. So um, let's get cracking. Should we uh, set the tripod up and have a little look at something? Should we? What do you suggest? Yeah. Go for it. What would be your uh, suggestion then? What, a beer to try? Mm. Mm. Um, I'd probably go for one of the Mackie Mackie ones, to be honest. Yeah? yeah? Do you know what? I've, I've, I've not had one before. But well, these, these, is it? Let's, it? let's have a look. So which one would you... Oh, it depends what sort of mood you're in. Um, I've, my personal favourite of the two is the Celestial Monks. The double IPA. It is just gone nine o'clock in the morning. <laughs> let's, let's get into the double IPA. Right, so we picked the beer out the fridge. It's my first beer from Mackie Mackie, and this is their Celestial Munts Double IPA. This is a 500 milliliter can. 
8% ABV. And it's my first trying a Mackey Mackey beer. First time trying it. Let's get it out into a glass, see what we get. Oh, my apologies. A little bit of a spillage there on the opening. Oh, look at this. Look at that. Fantastic, fantastic looking beer. Two finger, lovely, fluffy, white head, good levels of carbonation. Nice, nice and hazy. And it's a light amber in colour, but a fantastic haze going on. Um, I, I've saved it a little bit for the for the lads in the can, uh, only because, are these cans can conditioned? Are there sediment in there? I'm not sure. Exactly. You're not sure? Uh, I'll, maybe I'll pour the rest out in a, into another glass in a moment and we can see if it's a can conditioned beer. But let's get the aroma then on this lovely looking beer. Oh, I can see why you suggested there. Uh, coming in, Lee. Coming in. All right. I can see why you suggested this one. This is uh, this is fantastic. Getting that muzzle on that. Know, it's seriously good, isn't it? Yeah. Just an absolutely belt out of that. Yeah. Tropical, hoppy, but all hops. All hops. None of that kind of. Um, concentrate stuff going on in here this is all you can tell it's the hops are jumping up the glass at you real tropical lovely do you want to let me get you a glass <laughs> come on see if it's see if there's any uh, sediment in the bottom of the glass there yeah let's have a look Get up to the camera oh yeah look at that Love that, love that. And I said, look at that. Looks <laughs> lumpy. <laughs> yeah, I do. I got to be honest with beer, and of course, you owning Dogs Window Brewery. I always find that when you get that sediment in the glass, it's it's only adding flavour. Oh yeah, totally. It's only adding flavour. It's not like I mean, if you can get past seeing the sediment in the bottle of the glass you get past that and then all you're doing is adding extra extra flavour to the beer. Should we should we get in? Cheers. Cheers everyone. <laughs> oh, oh. I was waiting for that. <laughs> Stone the crows. Stone the crows. What a fantastic beer that is. It's absolutely belting, isn't it? Absolutely belting, fantastic. <coughs> Lovely and soft, juicy, tropical, orange, tangerine, blood orange, grapefruit, peach, mango. It's all good, and what I do like about this, I, I tried one the other day, it doesn't need to hide the alcohol. No, that 8%, the, yeah. The alcohol presence just, you, you take the first sip, you get the flavour, and now all of a sudden it just warms. Mmm. Mmm. I love that about beer. That kind of warming sensation you get in beer. I'd say it slides down the throat into the pit of the stomach, and you can feel it warming all the way down. We're in that sort of... It's mid-October here filming now, and it's kind of... kind of We're headed definitely into Imperial Stout and Stout and double IPA territory, and we? Where we want something a bit kind of... I'm always a double idea, man. Yeah, I know what you mean. Fantastic, fantastic. That, that is, no, that is that is absolutely perfect. Uh, my first beer from Mackey Mackey, Celestial Months, double IPA. Uh, do they mention? They haven't mentioned the hops, but that doesn't that doesn't matter. Water, uh, barley, wheat, oats, hops, and yeast. Fantastic. Uh, what a beer! What a beer to be drinking. Look at the lacing on that. What are you getting from it, Lee? What, are you pulling anything slightly different I'm, from me? I'm getting drunk from it at this time of the moment. No, I think you're, you're pretty much spot on with that. The, uh, the mouth feels lovely and it, it, it's robust without being sticky. Mouth feels lovely and creamy, isn't it? Yeah. It, it's quite strange the because opposite. usually you get a stronger beer and uh, you get that sweetness with it as well. Yeah, but yeah. 
it's just not there. It's so so well balanced this beer. Oh, it's perfect, absolutely perfect. And what a nice space to drink a beer. Well, thank a you very much. Space to, you know, I mean, you could spend you could spend hours reading the different labels on the what hops are in the beers, and this is this is my type of place. This is nice wooden scaffold plank to lean on. Perfect, absolutely perfect. Kind of reminds me of my bar, isn't it? Quite, quite, quite similar. Yeah, yeah, not far off. Kind, kind of similar. <clears throat> You've got a little less uh, perfect draft and blades and stuff. Oh, so <laughs> yeah, no, I know, I know. Yeah, perfect. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I'm ready to rate this. This is fantastic, fantastic. I'm just, I'm, I'm in one of these kind of. I'm, I'm really loving the beer, but what? I, it's almost kind of like distracting being in here because you're drinking the beer, you. Yeah? Mm. That tastes great, and then you're looking. I, there's there's <laughs> all bottles and cans over here, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. What's what are we gonna do next? <laughs> You've done a fantastic job. Thank you. Sir. You really have. The nearest bottle shop. Nearest yeah? beer shop. The nearest beer shop, should I say? <laughs> the nearest beer shop. It's literally point one of a mile from Bridge End train station. If you're a beer fan. You have to come here. From stouts to porters to IPAs to cider. We had a guy come in, buy two bottles of rum just before we recorded. Um, they've got everything in here. Everything to keep the beer lover and the spirit lover happy. And the cider lover happy. Check it out, Bridgen, South Wales, if you're ever in the area. Going to rate this now. That's a 10 out of 10. It is. It's it's, be you've, cho you've chosen this beer because it's great, and it is great. You've chosen a really great beer for me to try. My first beer from Mackey Mackey, 10 out of 10. Please put your comments in the comments box. Subscribe to our daily beer and food reviews. I'll leave a link to the website of this place in the comments down below or in the description down below. Check them out. Boom. Cheers. Hey, looks exciting. Are we only just having one? Well, oh, come on! <laughs> got at least two! Oh, okay, what have you got? What have you got for me? Um, well, we've just had a new brewery in, which is uh, Drop Project. Drop? Okay. Yeah, and I've got a lovely little uh, session of all 12% <laughs> Imperial Stead. Why not? Why not? Why not? Lovely, look at this. What is this one in? Okay, go, this is called Voyage. Imperial Stout, 12% ABV, Drop Project, and they're based in Mitcham, CA. Now I'm imagining that's Croydon. Yeah, I think it's sort of south of London. Yeah, almost halfway between the centre of London and Croydon, somewhere. No, oh, brilliant. Right there. Fantastic. Well, again, what I'm really enjoying about this wonderful bottle shop of yours is that this is the second new brewery. For me, I've uh, not had anything from these, and I'll be perfectly honest, I've never heard of them. So, oh, shame on you. Sir. I, I know, shame I know. Let, let's let's get it out into a glass and see what we get. Right. There's your one. Oh, thank you very much. I've got bigger uh, glasses. Well, let me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But why not? Why not? Oh, well, that's big. Yeah. Is that okay? Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah? Oh, no, I, I was I, talking I, more about the beer, the way it was pouring. Oh, have some more. Have, have, some, have some more. Other, other, other. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, no, that is pouring fantastically well. Look at that. Oh, ho. I can't wait for you to get your nose in that. But yeah, I, 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 I can't wait to get my nose in it, but look at it, look at that. One to two finger, tan coloured head, jet black beer in the glass. I got little bits of sediment in my glass floating around. I'm not sure if you've got the same thing going on there. You did have the top of the can yeah. though, so. Um, oh, that's looking fabulous. Fabulous, look at that. Let's, let's, uh, let's get the nose. <laughs> wow, wow, an endless smile.
an endless smile. There's some fantastic roasted notes coming through here. Hints of coffee, chocolate, caramel, vanilla. Is it barrel aged? Is it barrel aged? I don't think so, no. Yeah, almost kind of. Well, when, a, when a stout gets the 12% ABV, it almost kind of leads you into wondering about kind of woodiness and stuff anyway, doesn't it? You're yeah. always kind of on the lookout for... It, it's got that sort of um, dark spirits. Yeah, yeah, sort yeah. Of brandy, whiskey. <sighs> wow. Yeah, let's, 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 let's get in. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Molasses, <laughs> yeah, it's it's That's just brilliant. Plum, fig, prune, roastedness, chocolate, coffee, caramel, stone the crows. Another stone the crows beer. Fantastic, fantastic. Now, of course, dogs with the brewery you probably brewed your fair share of imperial stout. You're probably the perfect person to talk to about this. See, now my idea with hops is that. When you brew a beer with very light malts, you're getting very kind of tropical behaviours from the from the yeah. hops. You're getting your, your passion fruit, your mango, your orange orange peel. When and this is only my I've only ever presumed this. When you add hops to something more roasted, you're getting more darker fruit flavours, aren't you? You're getting more of like the plum, the fig, the prune. Yeah, you do. The hops. Um, with a darker beer, a lot more of the flavour is actually coming from the malt rather than the hops. Right, there we go. Um, a lot of uh, stouts, especially the ones I do, um, use the old Faithfuls, the British EKG mm. and Fuggles, which aren't really flavourful hops. I mean, if you've had uh, like a golden ale made with those two hops, yeah, yeah, you wouldn't call them a hop forward beer. You get more of the malt out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, especially the, the, the chocolate and the roasty flavours, um, they can actually bring on other flavours in your mind mm -hmm. that are not necessarily there, but the combination of them, it's like the treacle, you know, there may be some crystal malt in it. I mean, I use 150 uh, dark crystal malt in all of my stones. Right, okay. And I find they bring that. But even down to the, the syrupiness, I mean, this is quite a fairly thick beer, even though it moves really well in the glass. It does, it does. It's, um, Would you say oats? Um, not necessarily, no. Mm. No. Yeah. But uh, because you've got that uh, that slickness of it, it kind of conjures up, uh, for me, like maple syrup. Yeah, definitely. Because definitely. It, it goes down similar to that sort of maple syrup on a pancake. In the, it, now... I love this kind of talking flavours over a beer because, of course, flavours is, is, is subjective, isn't it, between one person? So you're, you're telling me maple syrup but over, over and it, that sounds in my mind now perfect. When I was tasting it, I always go down the line of I can taste like figs and dark fruits and Ra raisins. It's quite, raisins, yeah. plums, figs. I think of like almost kind of like. Christmas time, whenever I drink a stout, yeah. and that's just my, that's just my brain's behaviour, I suppose, yeah. like when, I'm, when I'm drinking the, 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 the stout, but when you mention to me maple syrup, and yeah, that works as well, that works as well, it, it's a fabulous beer though, isn't it? Oh, it is. I mean, I, I'll be honest with you, even though, I mean, I won, won a Seba Gold Award for one of my stouts. Um, well then. I well, thank you very much, <laughs> just, just thought I'd slip that in there. <laughs> oh, good, good. <laughs> Uh, but I'm not a stout fan. Right. And Are you not? I'm not. No, I'm really not a stout fan. I'll, I'll have a couple of sips. But this, I mean, there's, there's two things I don't like about uh, dark beers. First of all, it is barrel aged. I know everybody's going to scream at me for saying yeah, that. Yeah. Anything's got barrel aged on it because I don't like spirits. I don't. I, I, do, I can't drink it. Mm. Anything over 9% in the stout, generally I shy away from. Okay. And stats in general, but <laughs> this is insane because yeah. this is just so good. I could actually drink a whole glass of this, and well, there you go. I'd probably take one home with me as we get. I must be honest. 
Yeah. So so maybe 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 it's a frontier that that you can kind of seem to conquer if you like in your in your beer journey. Is that I mean I'm I'm very much the same with sour beer. I struggle. I struggle with not. I don't struggle with the Belgian sours like this this this, this one here. This I know. That would be absolutely fantastic. But I, I struggle with the newer world. The, the smoothie sours. The, the, the smoothie sour. I, I really struggle with them, really. To the point where it's almost as if it's uh, uh, like a block in my mind now. And I'm like, even before I've opened the can or a bottle, I'm like... And, and I suppose, for me, that's something I can work on. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for, for myself. Excuse me. Yeah, get it out. Um, for me, it, it's the same with coffee. I love proper coffee. Mm. There's coffee roasters in Bridgens called Durston's where okay. I buy all my coffee. Uh, I grind it fresh for every cup into the uh, espresso machine, do it properly. Um, but if somebody says, oh, do you want an instant coffee? I'll go, yeah, okay. So I kind of think of it as a different drink. Yeah, right, okay. Don't yeah. think of it as coffee. No, I, I do kind of do the same with the uh, the heavily fruited sours. Okay, it, it does say beer on the can, but it's not really a beer. It, uh, as uh, as you know, hops, you know, the right height come out. It, it's it's definitely not that. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. I, veer, I I love sour beers. I love heavily fruited sour beers. Mm. But I kind of view it as a different drink rather than yeah, yeah, group, yeah. Grouping in with the whole beer thing. This, this is tremendous. This, this is absolutely drop project. So there's a couple of breweries now that are definitely on my radar here, being drop project and the first one, the double IPA, Mackie Mackie. Uh, they're definitely two breweries. Um, but, but then again, it, it's an education process being in this shop because I've never had anything from Don Zoko there, their fest beer, if I can show that to the camera. Um, and, and I read on the back of the can, I was fully expecting that to be German, but that's actually from Scotland, Edinburgh in Scotland. So uh, there's another one. What I really should be doing in my craft beer adventures is is actually kind of getting out. You need to visit here more. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I need to come to places like this more and, and have a look around because I don't want. I'm, I'm always one. I, I, I speak to the camera like I speak to a mate in the street. I've gotten a little bit lazy recently by just kind of like I've fallen in love with German lager, and, and that seems to be my frontier at the moment. And, and kind of like, yeah, it's great, it's great, but there's only going to be a, a certain proportion of people who will want to watch that on YouTube. That is very true. You know, the, the, I should be out there doing the Don Socos and, and, and these drop project beers. And, and I am. Little channel exclusive for you. Um, I had a GoPro delivered just yesterday. So I got a GoPro. Um, I've got to get myself one of those media mod things. And I'm going to buy myself one of those little, of course, SD, mini SD cards to go on the side of it. And I'm going to be up and running. So you're going to see a lot more out and about stuff from me in the future because although I've enjoyed doing it with the iPhone it's still your phone isn't it it's still your phone it's not it's not a dedicated camera that you can go right I'm out I'm setting up I'm doing a project I'm waiting for a text to come through <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm waiting for a text to come. I, I, we, we've gone off the subject here but but I mean I mean I, I'm so comfortable leaning on this fantastic bar here and, and drinking this imperial stuff that I mean I've not we've known each other for years Lee, haven't we we have indeed yes. yeah just going to the Welsh beer festivals and uh, and, and so forth um, it's, it's it's wonderful absolutely wonderful that you've got this shop um, with the with the with the fridges and, and, and wonderful beers in here you obviously know your stuff um, but I think it's time now definitely time after drinking his imperial stout to go and have a look at your brewery so let's go and have a wander but i'm not gonna go to dog twin no brewery without <laughs> without without rating the beer so 
Voyager Imperial Stuff from Drop Project Beer, 12% ABV, absolutely fantastic, fantastic. Cheers again. What's your rating out of uh, 10, Lee? Well, since I really am not a fan of the stout, I would have to do a 10 out of 10 on that. Can I say it? Yeah, of course. Can I say it? Stone the Crows! Stone the Crows! <laughs> Stone the Crows! I'm going to join Lee on a 10. It's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. I'm picking up personally kind of like plums, figs and prunes and, and, and of course what Lee mentioned, the, the maple syrup, definitely get that aspect of it too. Um, it's it's lovely, it's a really lovely beer, 10 out of 10. Let's go to the brewery. <laughs> right Lee, we are at the famous Dog's Window Brewery, I can hear the, it, it is. <laughs> There's a little dog there. Uh, let's have a look at your brewery. Yeah, let's go free. in. Walk this way. Walk this way. Here we go. Look at this. Look at this. So already I can see fermenters over there. Look at that. And then we got your boil kettle. And then your mash tun. Do you want to go, if you go that way, we haven't got much room, you go that way. Yeah, it's so, a squeeze with two people in here. No, it's perfect. If I was to have my own brewery, then this is the way I would start. This is exactly the way I would start. I'm quite hands-on. Uh, we'll show you all the hands-on bits and pieces in a moment, but um, I can do a little bit of plumbing and stuff, so... Yeah, this is this is how I would do it too, if I had a garage, which I, <laughs> uh, uh, an underground bunker. <laughs> um, so where are we, Lee? Where's, yeah. the, where's the starting point? Okay, so we've got a hot liquor tank here. Okay. Um, the biggest one I could get in here was five hundred litre. Okay. Uh, I absolutely brimmed it, and you can only get five hundred and ten in it, but that's about all I need, really. Yeah. Uh, then you've got the mash tun next. Let's have a look inside. Yeah, yeah, sure. There we go. We've got the spar jam underneath here, which spins round when we're sparging. Fantastic. Um, a lot of the stuff that uh, that I've got in the brewery I've kind of fashioned myself uh, for function because it's such a small space. Mm. There's not a lot of people that make off-the-shelf parts to, to fit in something this small. Yeah, yeah. Um, so when I'm using sparge, uh, I've got, I can pull these off and put different attachments on there. So that when we go on there when I'm sparging. Fantastic. Um, also, I made myself a little uh, grain I love this. here as well, which will plug into there. Yeah. That drops in, so it'll actually hydrate the grain as I'm pouring it through. That's fantastic. In, into a mash tun. Yeah. So it cut, cuts down on about 75% of trying to get everything wet. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, and sturdy. And, I've got and, a yeah. patent on that, by the way, just in case anybody out there wants to see it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, just up from the, the mash tun, we've got the temperature control for the HLT. Okay. Um, the, the actual brew kit, uh, the two wooden parts, um, are off a four barrel kit. Okay. But because I couldn't fit a bigger HLT than 510 litres in here, um, I actually use these undersized, which uh, is kind of good because you can't actually boil over that thing. Mm -hmm. You can get it boiling as much as you want and it won't, uh, it won't do anything. So, it drops down into my little fashioned underback there. Brilliant. Look at that. Made out of A that. stew pot. <laughs> I love it. I think it's great. Great. So any kind of like sediments are going to fall behind that kind of level there and they're going to get kind of stuck and you're not bringing sediments into your boil kettle, which is here. That's it, yeah. Yeah. So from there, you've got this little pipe at the top. Um, the, the wort is then pumped into there. Yeah. Um, all the boiling, the hot additions and everything are done in here. Um, again, I wanted to work all hops in it but there wasn't anywhere on this you could actually whirlpool. So I did a, a funky bit of plumbing and made my own whirlpool. So that goes back in yep. and you're pushing the wort. Yeah, because it runs parallel yep. inside like so on the inside. It's running around the out, 
the out inside of the tank which yeah that that's in gene that's that's fantastic yeah you can see it right there there you go so it's going to be spraying around whirlpooling around in that oil kettle fantastic brilliant brilliant so next. put your shovels <laughs> in the background yeah yeah two shovels one for digging out one for stirring yeah 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 custom holds by me yeah i can see yeah <laughs> So um, after we've done that, it's got down to the right temperature. So we get stuck again. There we go. That pipe will come out. Switch this little switch here. Yeah. That one there. Open. Yeah. And that then reaches into the fermenter. Work goes into there, pitch the yeast. And away we go. We're and away we go. And away we go. That That is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. It shows, I mean, look, you've got the front here. Obviously, this is um, was a garage where you probably parked a car. And you yeah. fitted all of this in here. And it's functioning, functioning well. Like You've got plenty of room to wander about. And, you know, it's not like you're overly cramped. Yeah, the only time it gets a bit cramped is, uh, is when you're working on multiple stuff in here. So if I'm mm. kegging in here... Right. Yeah, get, you, you've got you've got to shift stuff before you can do other stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but apart from that, yeah, it's uh, there's no problem. It's size of batches. I do. Brilliant. It's, 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 yeah, yeah. I I envisage envisage this myself. If I sorry, we've had a couple of double IPAs and imperial stouts <laughs> in your in your shop. But um, I, I would envisage this myself. If I if I was ever to start a brewery, something along those lines, it would be exactly like this. I and and would, would, you know, yeah, I need to introduce you to somebody as well, which is this little fella here. Um, this was actually the first all grain brewing kit that I worked on to sell it commercially, and now I just use it for heating water up. But... Amazing, amazing. So, my next question we've hit the fermenter stage. Is there anything going to come out either of that tap there or that, that tap there? Or not? Not it'll sure be, which be, is there, is the there, yes. it'll be the top one, is it? So, yeah. if you grab a glass, right? First of all, we need to sanitize the things, of course, because we don't want any buggies getting back into the uh, into the beer. I'll just, just move my wellies, yeah. That's that's the other problem with this space, you've got to put stuff somewhere, yeah. No, of course, so you've got to, you pretty much got to move everything before you do anything. Do this one first. Okay. This is a uh, six percent oatmeal stout called Old Dog New Tricks. Old Dog New Tricks sounds like my dog. Yeah. There you go, sir. Oh, look at that! Look at that! Look at the look at the as you rocking that beer back and forth. Look at the wonderful. So that that's not carbonated yet. So whatever, yeah. whatever's sitting there is uh, residual CO two that's been left in there from the fermenting process. Just gonna. So this is six percent. Yep. I'll be really brief for this. Uh, so we got a pout, stout porter. Uh, stout oatmeal stout. stout. Oatmeal stout aroma. Oh, really good. Really good. Nutty, biscuity, bready, loads of oatmeal. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. The things that you can do in your garage. <laughs> Fantastic. Really tasty. Good mouthfeel. Lovely biscuits. Now, I went down to Shepherd Neen Brewery. First brewery I ever left the house uh, when, when I left the kitchen and finally got out to breweries. And it was it was Shepherd Neen Brewery. And uh, a guy called Stuart Main from Scotland. And his favourite phrase when he tasted a beer straight out of the fermenter was lovely biscuits. And, and 
for, for a while, probably for the best part of two years after that, I was thinking, what was that man on about? But it, it kind of clicked with me a few years into drinking beer. It, it's a bit like biscuits, isn't it? It's a bit like oatmeal biscuits and oatmeal kind of, in this case, stouts. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. So, you've sprayed. I have indeed. So I grab a glass and all. I'll, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll let you set that up because I don't know how to how to pour a beer out of this. You have to turn and stuff. Yeah, just let if the, it was uh... a tap, just a tap. I mean. <laughs> it is just a tap. You have to it turn is just a tap. tap. Yeah, you just got to make sure all the uh, sanitizer comes out of it first. Oh, look at this. Ta-da! Oh! Oh, look at that. That looks like a, a Nipah. It's, uh, it's a very hazy pale ale. Oh, right, okay. Off we go again, then. Look at that. Wonderful. Oats, uh, oats again? Uh, no, no, wheat. Ooh. My, my pops <laughs> throwing beer on the floor in the brewery. Fabulous. It smells like a, like a lemon drizzle. Orange and lemon drizzle. Oh, let's, let's get in. Cheers. Oh, yeah. That, I would, I would scream oats there. I'd be screaming out, yeah, the, you know, if I was in my, my conservatory now reviewing this, I'd be, yeah, this is full of oats, and but just wheat, yeah? Yeah. Wow. Uh, extra pale malt, wheat malt, uh, dextrin malt, and a tiny little bit of caramel. That is fabulous. Of course, another old brewer once told me that you'll never get beer as fresh as straight out of the fermenter. It is, it is kind of that kind of like the ultimate, isn't it? Straight oh, it is. I mean, that's that's literally only just finished uh, conditioning. So it's as fresh as the, I mean, the hops are screaming out of the glass. So juicy, so so juicy. Some passion fruit, some mango, some grapefruit. And then it's just super soft. It's it's like the, the the softest beer I think I've ever drank in my life, to be honest. Mmm. Wonderful. So two two great beers. Two 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 great beers. Amazing, amazing. Thank you very much, Lee, for inviting me to to Dog's Window Brewery and Senior Setter. Oh, you're welcome. It's now, a pleasure to have you here. Yeah. So. Naturally, I've got to ask this question because I'm sure, I'm sure the people who are, are watching the video all around the world are, are, are wondering what's what's next for Dog's Window. Are you content? Are you are you? This is a fantastic setup, no doubt. Um, with the current, I mean, we've gone through three major things in the world, and we? we've gone through Brexit. We've we've gone through the whole. 2019 situation cost of living um if i think small nimble breweries like this are the breweries that that will get out the other side of this you know the this the, the, the last five years these turbulent times we've had um but once we get out of the the the, the turbulent times is 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 this you or are, are you gonna Kind of like, or does it just depend on where the market goes? What, what um, your customer base wants? I'll be perfectly honest with you. I've been to quite a few big breweries, mm. and uh, for one, I love to be in control of everything that's happening here. Many brewers do; they yeah. really do. Um, so, if it goes bigger, then something's got to change. Yeah. Um, and for me to not be this involved. On a bigger scale, um, I don't think I'd really want it. I mean, my my passion is the beer, and yeah, it, and it's my passion goes into every single step of the process, 
to getting the deliveries in, to brewing it, to making up the recipes, canning it, choosing the label designs. Mm. I, mean, I do absolutely everything myself. Mm. Um, and to take one of those elements away, I think it would actually, um, it wouldn't be the same for me. So I went to a brewery recently. I brewed a beer with them recently. And the head brewer said he left um, his job, which was sitting in front of a computer all day, looking at spreadsheets to get into brewery, brewing, which he loved. And now he has a big brewery and now he sat back in front of a computer <laughs> Give the spreadsheets again. looking at spreadsheets again where he would much prefer to be like exactly what you're saying here, in control, on the shop floor, making it, brewing it, doing the labels. Um, yeah, it, it's, I, I, I suppose, yeah, it, it's one of those things. If, if, if Dog's Window suddenly become, you probably have to change things, wouldn't you? Look at, look at kind of like the future. But you, your beer, your beer is certainly absolutely fantastic. Um, yeah, if, if it was change to change, there's only one option that I'd probably consider. Mm. And if somebody bought the whole lot, uh, I, I just retired Dog's Window as a whole entity. If somebody wants to buy the whole lot at the right price, yeah. yeah, and I would consider that. But to let go, I mean, my beer is, is my beer. I, yeah. I know yeah. from start to finish, uh, when I get a really good untapped review, I know that really good and tap review is not down all to, of you. It's not down to anybody else. It's, no, it's purely down it's to purely me. you, purely you. If you're able to do untap reviews on these two be two two beers here, then 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 do it. Now, um, you surprised me with a couple of beers in the shop. Um, I'm going to surprise you a little bit with with the you delivered two beers to my house last week. But I've still got a can of your Belgian, I think it's called Play Play Dead, I think yeah. it's called. Yeah. I've still got a can of that that's been in my fridge uh, for probably well over a year now. So one of, one of the beers that you delivered to me recently, I'm going to do a side-by-side -side with the quad. I'm, I'm sure that would have aged fantastically well. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to do it with, yeah, I'm going to do it with... Uh, with that beer, but yeah, um, next next port of call. We've seen the brewery. Um, I think we're now going to head out into Bridgend. We are indeed, and have a have a wander about the pubs and bars of Bridgend. Thank you, Lee. This I, I'm loving this. I'm I, I feel very much at home here. Um, in fact, we might stay here for maybe half an hour or so longer, and 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 open those taps up a bit more. <laughs> Cheers. You're welcome. <laughs> Okay, we are at our first pub in Bridgend, the Three Horseshoes. And inevitably, inevitably, there's someone cutting a tree down right where we're filming. <laughs> right, let's get in. Queen Street, Bridgend. Home cooked food. There's the menu, looks really good. Uh, lager, stout, cider and bar snacks. That's Let's go in. Looks all right, doesn't it? It is. Wow. Hello. What can I get you? Um, can I have a dog's window, please? <laughs> a pun? They do your beer. They, they don't need, oh, okay, no. oh, okay. <laughs> Um, sorry, uh, I'm with the brewer dog window. I he's, thought you'd... he's just doing a uh, like a full thing of uh, bars and present. If that's sorry, is that okay to film in here? Of your, it's going on YouTube. Uh, <laughs> of, I'm not filming customers. Just, just, okay, yeah, is that all right? Just yeah. to show you what beers, okay? Oh no, I won't. No. Um, so we got beer Moretti, neck oil, which is good. Red stripe, which is good. Uh, Foster Green, yeah, look at this. Yeah, this is all right. Lovely place. So, there's another place here, a little bit windy on the corner, but this is called Morgan's Bistro and Cocktail Bar. It's closed at the moment, but they've set up in a really lovely old building here in Bridgend. But we can't go in, it's closed. So, on to, on to the next 
on to the next pub. So the next place we're going to be looking at is the Windham Arms, which is now a Weatherspoons pub. But Lee was telling me that it used to be a kind of like an independent hotel here in Bridgend. But it looks quite nice, actually. Uh, they, as always with Weatherspoons, Lee, they do a pretty good job, don't they? They do, yeah. Of what they do. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Let's get in. Cheers, thank you. Yeah, look at that. That's quite a nice pub. General kind of Witherspoon staple beers, Abbott, Doom Bar, IPAs. Punk IPA these days, Bud Light. But yeah, this is this is this is the Wyndham. Let's uh, let's go. Well, it's quite a nice place that, isn't it? It's lovely. Yeah. Right, Lee, where are we off to next? Where are we going? Um, well, we've got a little walk to the uh, to the next bar, but I just wanted to show you this lovely uh, cenotaph that we've got in here. Okay. Uh, I think the sculpture on it is absolutely uh, amazing. Plus, we've got some lovely architectural buildings. Yeah, the really, the, like, um, kind of Georgian, I would say. If I was to guess at it, like George and it almost feels a little bit like Tenby here, doesn't it? Yeah, if you look at the uh, the architecture of the HSBC as well. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's quite a nice place. They're, all the buildings are really well looked after, aren't they? Yeah, look at that. Oh, and you got your Chinese restaurant there, is it? Uh, no, it's a Chinese shop. Chinese shop, right. Yeah. We'll go up this way, but you all want to film up here. Okay, right. Next pub is a couple of, um, of course, like any town, we've had we've had pandemics, we've had all the other stuff that's been going on. You know, towns are suffering. My, I, I wouldn't want to film Barry Town Centre, where I live, but towns are suffering. So we'll skip this bit and we'll get to our next pub. Right, we've made our way through this little lane and we're coming to the Corvo Lounge. Cafe bar. So this is another part of uh, Bridge End High Street. There we go. Is it not open yet? Is no, it? No, next door down. Oh right, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love this Georgian. It feels very much like Tembi now, oh, they got music, so all I'm gonna have to do is talk a bit loud over this so we get over the music part of it. Right. Oh, maybe not, no. Wow, look at this place. Amazing. Uh, Moretti, Manibria, Madri, that sort of thing going on, yeah. <laughs> That's Lee. fantastic. Okay, so the next pub is the King's Head, a traditional free house, Sky Sports, Heineken, that sort of thing going on here. But, you know, they got some pansies outside, they got some flowers outside there. Let's get in. Again, it's a lovely old kind of Georgian building that they kind of set up in. Yeah, it's kind of classic, classic British pub, isn't there? Where you've got all your beers and kind of cascales going on. Fantastic. Okay, so we got some Thomas Ilford, uh, Mumbles beer, Hobgoblins, Neckles, and of course some Tiny Rebel. And there's some of the beers that have been on in the last few months. Fantastic, fantastic. Great. So, Lee, this is a bit of a chip shop alley, I suppose, is it? You've got the Golden Bowl, it's a bit windy. Lucky Star, Delhi Spice. Yeah, is this... Want, if you're ever hungry in Bridgend, this is the street to go down. This is the street? No, no, absolutely. This is... Yeah. 
my type of place, I suppose. <laughs> I do like my takeaways and bits and pieces, yeah. So we have the old castle. The old castle inn. So where is the castle? Um, is it gone? It's not that far away. Really? It's, uh, it's probably about half a mile from where I live. It's quite nice. Again, Georgian kind of look to it. So, oh, look at this. Oh, so, yeah. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic looking place. Fireplaces, wood. Hello. Okay, so I just asked a lovely barmaid if I could film. Uh, hello. hello. Thanks for letting me film in here. Uh, we got some beer and Moretti, some neck oil, Heineken, John Smith's. That sort of place. But what I'm really liking about this pub is all of the exposed stonework, some of the exposed kind of like pillars, the, the plaster, all of the fireplaces, which look absolutely kind of fantastic. Yeah, this place is my type of place. I could quite easily sup a few beers in here. It's nice and cosy. Yeah, definitely nice and cosy. Thank you very much for your time. Thank okay. you. Have a lovely day, guys. Thank you. Cheers. Yeah. I like that. I thought it was really cool. Really lovely old pub. Yeah, yeah. And where's, how far is the coach? Just around the corner. So we've stopped off on the way to the coach for some nice chips. Look at these. Uh, we got a little bit of package along the way. Um, Gary, these chips are fantastic. Oh, really? This chip shop's been open for 60 years. You've had it for three years. That's right, yes. Fantastic, and so this is like, Lee was telling me this is the best fish and chip shop in Bridge End. Well, thank you, Lee. <laughs> I appreciate that. You're welcome. They're really blooming great chips. Really good. Um, something after having a few pints. You need you need something, don't you? Jay? Yeah, but they, like, they do use them. They, they have regulars come in from the coach. Um, they yeah. have the, the real ales, as in Lee's, Lee's company. Um, mm. And they, they take food into the coach as well, which is... Uh, Good which is thing. what I'm about to do. <laughs> yeah, it's a good thing for uh, for local businesses that businesses sharing customers. Yeah, and recommending to other breweries where they do guest things in in the coach. And I just think it's good for the It's great. It's great for I I, I go around film in all uh, as many towns and cities as I can with beer. And what strikes me the most with these smaller companies now is the community. Community matters. You all kind of know who each other are. You all kind of like working, and, and that's how businesses survive these things. They have like a community spirit. So yeah, you can take the chips in the coach if you like. That's that's. Uh, <laughs> Next stop. Thank you very much, yeah. Daddy. Thank Cheers, you. Mate. Cheers. Thank Cheers. you. Thank you. So we finished with the fish and chip shop, which is just there on the sign. And Lee, we're going to go into the coach, at which the sign you designed. That's your kind of picture there. I, I photographed it down in uh, Swansea Bus and Coach Museum. Fantastic. So here's the coach. They got their own brewery in here, which is fantastic. Again, another Georgian kind of style, Victorian style building. And here's the kind of the front of the coach. Uh, let's get in. Let's uh, lead the way. You got the your trap door there, the Americans love a trap door when they watch the videos. So looking into the building, classic kind of like, I love that, that or brewery going on there where they, so they brew their own beer here for the coach yeah. and then they sell it in a couple of their pubs around the yeah, area. They've got uh, Town Hall Square in uh, Cowbridge and now the crossing in Flamblevy. That's amazing. So the, the beer is kind of sent straight to these pubs for, for sale. And all of the beers. Now, it's funny. Um, I used to work for this company, um, Evan Evans. And that was the last... I was a salesman for these guys. And I was part of the pe person involved in coming up with that beer there, the Chieftain by Kelt, which I'm quite proud of. Uh, and then along the top is all the different beers that they've had on in this bar's lifetime, which is really cool, really cool. But we're not here for that. We're not here for the Madri or the Prava or the Guinness or the Urban Dusk. We're here for the Dog's Window on Keg. Got some beer riff as well, which is really cool. And I was with, that was my last collaboration 
Brew your craft brewery, Dark Fruits Juice Forsyth. That's cool. They're a, they're a lovely bunch of people there from Brew York. Great people. Lee and Wayne, great people. Uh, but yeah, we're here for this. Lee's Big Dog on the Bridge. Dog's Window Brewery, Hazy IPA, 6.3% ABV. <laughs> no, here we go. Yeah. She's coming. Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. You don't mind being on camera, do you? Yeah, right. Lovely. Thank you very much. Let's have a look at this pour then. Oh, look at that. Really lovely, hazy beer. Good head on it. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you very much. So these are all the beers you've had on over the years, yeah, is it? Yeah. Yeah? Well, a lot more than that. Yeah? <laughs> lot, lots and lots. Yeah. Lots have been changed around. I can see, yeah. All that. All that. Oh, they're different. Look at all those pump clips all over the place. Great chocolate slug up there. I remember a beer. What was the slug beer? Hmm? The slug beer. Remember that beer? Slug beer. It was called something slug. I remember it. Quite a famous oh, beer. Oh, chocolate slug. But there was one... It was another. There was a... I seem to remember it. I don't know. Maybe I'm backing up the wrong tree. <laughs> so this is one of your beers that you brew yeah. from, the, from the brewery there. Yeah. Uh, the X2. X2. And then two years. Ah, cool. We've got Rupert Holmes and Sesh. That's pretty cool. And you got another two pubs where you sell this in? Um, I think there's three. Three, three pubs? Fantastic. Cross, Milton Corner, and Wentown Square. Oh, and Bob Jim. Fantastic, fantastic. <laughs> and some Thornbridge. That's, that's one of the classic beers there, isn't it? Thornbridge Joy Pair. I think I've got a lot of people on the craft beer. Oh, yeah, look at that, though. Look at that. That looks fantastic. Fantastic, look at that. Right, Lee, if you don't mind uh, holding out for a minute. I'm going to do what I do best. <laughs> yeah, drink it. <laughs> drink it, that's it, yeah, absolutely. Drink it and it. talk about it. Yeah, lovely head, good hazy looking beer. Oh, it smells fantastic. Lovely, juicy, hoppy, passion fruit, grapefruit, mango. Mm. Just uh, dive in. Cheers, everyone. That is. Drinking it, Sally. I didn't catch your name, sorry. Sean. Sean. What do you think, Sean? Isn't it nice? Isn't it, isn't it really lovely? Very juicy. Really lovely, juicy, kind of, almost like it's an explosion. Mm. Explosion of fruity flavour going on there. Lovely. Um, passion fruit, mango, grapefruit, orange, all of those wonderful flavours. Really soft as well. I mentioned this earlier on. Do you use, it's just oats? Is wheat. It all? Wheat. 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 Wheat, yeah. Yeah, really, really easy drinking beer. Mm. <laughs> Too easy. You never, you never think that was six point three percent ABV. Look at that. Terrific stuff. Terrific. Right, I'm going to spin the camera on you, and you can try it, and you can you can let me know your thoughts on it. <clears throat> what a lovely pub. What a lovely the coach in Bridge M. What a lovely pub. I know it's your own beer, but um, I'm, you know, you'd probably oh. be a bit more in the kid. Always tastes different on draft. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's smoother on draft for some reason, I find. That could be just making that up. But yeah, it's um, definitely full of tropical fruits. A uh, tiny little bit of um, orange peel. Yeah, in yeah. In there as well. It's full on though, isn't it? It's full yeah, on. It's, like... um, it's made with uh, predominantly citra. Mm. But there's a little drop of um, Centennial gone into dry hopping as well. It's, Amazing. Um, interestingly enough, this is the same beer, almost, as the one you tried earlier at the brewery. Mm. But that one's a, a 4.8 and this is a 6.3. 6.3. Which gives it a much fuller mouthfeel. Mm, wow, well, I'm going to... I mean, of course, you rate your own beer, you, you can be as criti critical as you, you know, what, what do you think? Uh, in terms no. out of 10. 
I'd, I'd, I'd have to go for a uh, if I if I was buying that over the bar, and I'm always critical. I'd have to go for a four point five out of five. Yeah, so nine out of ten. Nine out of ten. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm going to do my. Uh, well, <coughs> it's fantastic. I've had a great day, in which I, I know you never know when you go to these places. Like I'm going to be honest now. Um, I said to my viewers on the channel, I'm going to go to Swindon. And people are like, oh, there's nothing in Swindon, is there? But it's funny, you go to Swindon, and I found some amazing places in Swindon. This very much reminds me of Swindon, of, of the people around here don't want me saying that. In the, in the, like, like, you never know until you go to a place, you never know what you're going to find. And all I found today is great beer, all day long. Great beer after great beer. Yeah, Come and visit Bridge End, visit the coach, amazing beers here. I like that a lot. So nine, I agree, agree with Lee, 9 out of 10. 9 out of 10 from Lee Love Craft Beer. I hope you liked today's video. Uh, this is the very end of the video now. Uh, we've been all around Bridge End and I've had a fantastic time. Boom, cheers.